Well, here we are again. We're at Shark Cap Table, Three Thin, where you make killer deals. We are going to talk about the third tab, which is the seven-year projections. Now, we've already done the 24 months income statement only. Now you're going to see how this all integrates. It's not very difficult, but you do have to do a little work. Amazing. you got to do a little bit of work, but it's easy if you follow my instructions, and I'm going to be happy to show you how this all works. So let's go over there. All right, just to review, folks, you know that units multiplied by price equals revenues, and units multiplied by unit costs is the cost of goods sold. Of course. Now, we decided that 24 months is enough to generate accuracy, but you need seven years to figure out when you're going to exit, and we didn't want to get into all the months in all these years, so we decided to just kind of simplify just do years. It's, it's good enough. Anyway, just remember, no matter how accurate you think your projections are, they're still guesses. But you have to have guesses so that you know where you could be and how much cash you might need. And most important of all, you want to tell your investors how lucky they're going to be if they invest with you and you meet your projections. They're going to make a millions and millions of dollars, maybe even billions of dollars. Hey, why not? Think big. I like to think big. You should too. All right, so let's get into this thing. All right, so we've automated the process of projecting units and cost of goods to speed up the process and allow quick changes. You're going to like this. There's a lot of little spin buttons and there's some automatic things going on. Now, we decided to do compound growth, or it could be a compound reduction factor that will begin with year two and multiplies it, say, by 1.05 and again multiplies year 3 by 1.05 and so forth. You can see what's actually happening in this little graphic right here. Here are the first two years by the months. Now, the ending number, for example, is 105. So you take 105, you multiply it by, in this case, 5%. So now you get 105, and that becomes 110 because you had 105 plus 105 is 110. 110 is the beginning number. You hit it by 1 times 1.05, you get 116, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. That's what we're doing. Do not rely on entry of year one and two numbers when in the 24-month mode, one. Yes, well, what that means is don't rely on the entry of year one and two numbers because they don't, they don't exist. When you're in the 24 months, those are the numbers you're generating, and they're going to consolidate into year one and two when you do the seven. That's seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, when you do the seven years, okay? First, you do these by the 24 months, and then this one comes over here, and this one comes over here, and you got two more over here because there's still seven, okay? One of the things we have here is a nice little chart, and remember, we have low, mid, and high cases. And so this gives you a chance, once you get it all put together, to just kind of look at what it is. So here are the revenue and the EBITDA and the cash. We've got a little drop-down box here. Where are we going to chart the low? That's what's showing. We can char chart the mid. Bingo. You see you got a little bit of a loss there. And here's the high chart. Now we're going to get into the real meat. So I'm going to scroll this up. And there we are. So... We're dealing in this thing with the, with the low case <clears throat> where we're talking about unit sales, unit pricing, and unit cost of goods. Now, remember, we have four products. So there are the unit sales from the 24 months and so forth and so on. And remember, here's the unit pricing, so forth and so on. And then you've got the unit cost of goods. Now the question is, we need years three, four, five, six, and seven. How do we do it? Well, one way to do it is you could simply enter a number. And that number simply adds on to the number beneath it. If you want to add some more, you just do this. Otherwise, it stays flat. You, you kind of want to make sure this thing always grows a little bit. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. I'm going to zero this out. Now, When we go to zero, that is when we've turned off all of the 
24 months. Notice there's nothing in here. So what you now have to do is you actually have to enter the numbers by hand. So maybe you do 1,000, 1,200, and then, you know, maybe you want to do something silly like this. You see, notice here, it always keeps the same one going forward until you put another red number in there. So boom, there you are. See, now you're progressing by 200, and that's the total number of toy cars you have. It keeps adding on, adding on, adding on. And actually, this has gotten bigger because of the way I spread this, uh, it's actually accelerating. If you just wanted to make it 1.2, that's what you do. See the difference there, folks? Okay. So I want to uh, zero these numbers out. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to put one so that we can see our 24 months. All right. So let's keep on. The same thing happens here. Same thing happens here. But now let's go see the fun. So now we're actually getting into the revenues, the cost of goods, and the unit sales. This is a little a little number table of the above based upon the number one product. See what happens now when I go to two, it's changing, three, four. Sometimes you'll see some changes in here if we've got changes up here. All right, so basically this one here with the, with the sort of the teal background, it just selects which one of the products you're looking at. Let's leave it at one and scroll up a little bit more so we can see what's going on with our revenues. Now, here are the dollars of revenues that we generated in the 24 months. Okay, see that? Notice that now the second year becomes the third year, becomes the fourth year, so forth and so on. Now we can accelerate or deaccelerate this growth in two ways. The easiest one is to do units. It makes the most sense. Now this is that compounding I told you about. We're going to compound everything by 5%. Yep, nope, 6%. So with this little spinner, we then made this is 5% bigger than this. 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 And what do you guess? Yeah, you got it. This is 5% bigger than this. Let's see what the curve looks like. Yeah. Now watch what happens when I really tromp on this. Now nothing happens until I release. Boom. Oh, look at that compound growth curve. Isn't that beautiful? And we can do it the other way around. We're just going to crank it on back down to, until you see one. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? You don't have to do any numbers. You just sit here and spin and paint by numbers. It's fun. That's how I like to do things. Now watch what happens if we come down here and we take off 9%. Look, we got a compound negative growth curve. Do you ever see that? Well, sure, as markets mature, you might actually see less and less happening. If you really want to hit it, you know, take off, uh, there you go, see? It'll never go to zero, but it'll get real close to it. Well, the most we can take off is 50%. I limited it, so it's not too crazy. So let's put it back at 100. You don't have to click this once. Just, just sit there and watch. It's like a gas pump. That's where I got the idea. Watch the gas pumps. I said, man, it's really good. You put your money in, and you watch this little number go. Brrr. Why can't we do that in the text in, in this thing here? And of course we could. All right. So if you understand how one of these works, you got all of them. Now, we could do the same thing here. Let's scroll down so you can see it. Uh, we, could, we could accelerate price. Watch what happens with price. What do you think price is going to do when you make it bigger? Same number of units sold and you're going to get more revenue. See, there's your revenue. Look at that nice revenue increase when you go up 141% each time. That's a hell of a price increase. I mean, that's crazy. Absolutely nuts. I would be very careful about growing the company by increasing the prices. Remember that. It's unit sales, not price increases. Prices are sticky. Nobody wants to pay any more. In fact, they want to pay less through time. And that's exactly what you may be facing. You may actually have to hit it a couple of percentage points to show the effects. See what's going on here? Revenues are dropping. But guess what? If revenues are dropping because prices are going down, maybe you'll sell more. Look at that. Ah, oh, they come right back up again. See, you've got full control over the future, or you wish you had full control. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future, but at least you can paint the picture faster and better than anybody else out there can with this tool. I'm telling you, you're going to look like geniuses. All right, 
So you could do that for each one of these products. Now we come down here, we're not talking about royalties yet because that's a deal making side of this deal in, in tab four. And we're just in tab three. So here we have the cost of goods sold. Now again, see the first year's, uh, these are dollars, $298 uh, dollars of cost of goods. And then there's $29.21 and notice it goes straight on across. Well, guess what we can do? We can increase those costs a little bit. And that might be the case might be the case now I do want to show you if we increase the units the number of units naturally down here the cost of goods will increase it's the same ratio I think it was like 50 50 you know 10 bucks and five bucks something like that so that's what's going on there okay folks so here we have the marketing expenses and you got your four marketing expenses that correspond with either four different markets or your four products. Now, notice that you've only got the first two years, and they're coming from your 24 months. We don't know what it's going to be in the future. We're, we're not doing any of this uh, compounding. You've got the opportunity now to write a little formula. So let's do that. Let's put an equal sign in there. Multiply by 0.12 times revenues. Right there. Make sure you lined up correctly. So that next is 35, and you could do that straight on across like this. Voila. That's because revenues have not increased. They're always at $29,000. But if you change this and made it go up a little bit because the unit sales, what do you think is going to happen to your marketing cost? Yes, they're going to go up because they're tied at 12% of the total. I'm going to again make this back to one because I want to keep the numbers the same. There we go. All right. So that's fine. We could do that. And, you know, we could, we could do that again. We could do that again and again. That's fine. And uh, what about uh, operating expenses? Well, this guy's in at 60000 Let's continue at 60000 You could always raise a little bit later, but let's just keep it flat for now. And we're going to copy this right into the red again. And yeah, maybe the sales was going to get a sixty thousand as well. And then there's the rent, make, make that thirteen thousand this next year, and maybe it goes to fourteen. See now you got a little bit of an increase, and you can slide copy, oh, slide copy it over, get a little linear projection. Thank you very much. And uh, there it is. Um, capex, we only put a hundred thousand dollars in that first year. That's good enough. So here's your after-tax income negative the first year then got nice positives that's great now let's go down to the balance sheet the balance sheet shows that you have a negative cash at the very beginning obviously and um, you'll still have negative cash in that first year second year seems to come out of it okay uh, these red numbers here could be adjustments in accounts receivable in case you need to change them you can uh, and of course, these are beginning balances right here. We're basically what we're saying is that accounts receivable will be 8% of sales. Is that right or wrong? Well, if you are doing credit card sales, such as if you're in the computer business or something or the software business and you're selling online, you're not going to have any accounts receivable. So you would basically make that zero. And uh, that'll free up some cash. Inventory, again, we are assuming that you have toys. You know, maybe we ought to make that inventory go to 10%. I don't know. It depends on how long a recycle, reorder, reorder, recycle would be. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways of doing inventory models. We want to keep it, again, pretty simple. I've got big, giant models which, you know, do beginning inventory, ending inventory, a certain amount for samples, and then a little extra. And then it takes, you know, two, three, four, five months to build a product. I mean... It's too complex. You never get through it. So we've got the liabilities, the same sort of thing, accounts payable. These are all beginning balances. If you had some beginnings, you could. And the reason you would have the red up here is if you had an accounts payable, you could work it off. You know, if I had a if I had fifty thousand dollars worth of accounts payable, uh, this fifty would stay on here forever. But but maybe we pay it off. Uh, you know, minus. Minus, minus, minus. Where's the minus? There's the minus 25. 
See, it's getting down there. Minus 25. Okay, now we're back down to where we were originally before we had that beginning balance. I'll just zero this out, I'll zero this out, and I'll zero this out. All right, so again, the same sort of thing. Now look, right now in this here, we're a little out of balance. Well, that's to be expected because we jiggered around with some of the beginning balances. So this is the retained earnings, and this is what we change. Generally, you find the one that's out of the blank. Doesn't work. Keep going. Hit the blank. Now it'll do it. 87. There you go. You got to kind of futz around because it's accumulating and taking away, and there's, it's, it's honest what it's doing, but you have to play with it. Well, and here's your cash flow statement. There's really nothing you do on cash flow except take a look at your beginning and your ending cash. And right here, we've got a little cash flow hiccup, uh, but we're doing pretty fine. Now, as you go down here, you'll have to set up the mid case the same sort of way. If you want to do a mid case, which I would recommend you do, uh, put some numbers in. Maybe you want to accelerate a little bit. You've got plenty of capabilities in this thing. Uh, now this one we've given the, the uh, owner a big raise, big, big raise, okay? And uh, down here we've got the same beginning uh, balances for assets and liabilities. No adjustments. Probably ought to balance this. There we go. Now it's all balanced. Cash flow, you see now you're a little deeper in the, in the dirt there. So folks, you got three financial statements. And all you got to do, and let's just review so you remember what you got to do. There are three. They're color-coded. Blue. Yellow green. Okay, now you know where we're at. Now let's go back and review just the overall thing, what you have to do. Remember, you if you see a, a zero here, that means nothing is coming in from the 24 months that you laboriously put in. You might just not want to do it. So you put it at zero and you have to enter stuff by hand here. Okay, But since we did the 24 months, I'm going to put this back to 1, and they'll turn on everything. Now, if you want to increase anything in the number of units sold, you could actually enter right up here. See, this, this is the, the manual entry. This would be affecting your price per unit, and this would be affecting your unit costs. Cost of goods sold. And you've got the ability to chart and look at the three revenues and the associated cost of goods and unit sales and it'll tell you what you're looking at see right up there toy boat number four so forth and so on and again if you want to change and make revenues ramp faster this this if they're set at a hundred percent there is no ramping. See, it's 29, 212, 29, 212, so forth and so on. All of these are the same. If you wanted to create a bump for some reason, maybe you had a fantastic, you know, sales and sold $50,000 right here. Okay, that's just a one-time event. But there it is. It shows. If you want to have some growth, well, you can do it with the units. And see, I can do this for each of these. See, if you want to see it actually go... You have to hit the two because I'm in the second line. See, the second line, and, and there I'm cranking. See how much that's doing. Now, if I want to see what happens with the third one, we've got to go up here to the third one. I'm right here at the third one, and there I'm going to crank it a little bit. Well, just a smidge in the up. And then this last one, the fourth one, oh, I'm going to say, we got problems. It's going down. So you can paint your pictures of revenues, Unit sales, cost of goods sold, prices. I mean, what else is there? Then you come down here, and you can, again, do the same thing with your cost of goods by spinning in a compound growth, or you can just put the entry. Marketing expenses, you can put a number in there because you won't have any numbers. It'll just show you the two, and then it'll be blank. You have to have some kind of number, so make sure you see some red in the marketing expenses and the operating expenses. Uh, it is manual. This is all manual here, but it's not very hard. 
And the CapEx, the same sort of thing. You know, maybe you got to buy a big shiny machine out here in the fifth year. Okay, so you put in 125000 bucks. Remember, we're expensing. We're not depreciating or amortizing. I know we're going to catch a little flack there, but uh, people worrying about depreciation and amortization in startup or an early stage company. Uh -uh. Just not needed. Not now. Later, yes, but not now. Remember, you're only trying to raise a bunch of money for friends family and maybe fools or a couple of professional investors you're not going to the vcs you're trying to get two three four five hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money but you can start a business with that kind of dough that's why they call me bruce Bado. okay enough joking so you got beginning balances for your assets your liabilities uh, a little balancing and that's it now one more thing one more thing if you want to print these things, because we got a lot of spaces in between here and everywhere, we ask you to actually do a little copy paste. And I'm going to show you what I mean by going up to Microsoft Word. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. I'm going to click on a blank one. I'm going to go up to the design. No, I'm going to lay out. Sorry, I'm going to go to margins. I'm going to make the narrow margins. I'm going to go to the orientation. I'm going to go to landscape. And there we have it. And I'm going to alt tab and we're going to do the very first one. Now, you see these little red guys here? Those are kind of like cut points right there. See how we've done this? Copy V for pasting. Come over here to this little control guy. Hit the picture. Whoopee! Now right there is going to be the next one. So we come in here. Now again, we don't want to take this as an instruction. We'll come down here. See we're at the at the bottom little corners, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna come down here to the very bottom. You see, see what right there? See how we did that all the way down? Okay, copy. V. Come down here uh, just to show you. I hope it doesn't go away. Okay, see that little control thing right there? You go like that, go for the picture, second from the from the right, and there you go. One more time so you can see what we're doing here. Now this one, I think you should just do that. Copy V, copy V, and we're going to come in here like this and do that. See, it's no big deal. You can, you can put a lot, a lot of nice pictures in here. And then um, this one right here. Now notice we're going to come down here, and this is a big one. Ah, you got to stop right there. Copy, Control V. We're going to do that little control thing right over here. There we go. And one more just so you see it. Okay, so we start again. Down to that red line. Copy, I'll text you. Uh oh. Well, isn't that interesting? I got to move that red line down. All right. Glad I caught that. Okay, so we come here down to the red line. Copy V, copy V, paste. Come over here, get this little guy. Thank you very much. And one more. Copy V. Do a little pasty thing. And voila! Look at that. Everything fits very nicely onto. And you can put these. You know, you can make these smaller if you want to. You can do things like that. Anything you can do with a picture, you can do it. So it's very flexible. These things look good. I spent a lot of time making the graphics clean and nice looking. So there you are. You've got your financial statements, and you got three sets of them. If you want to use them, which I recommend, a little extra work, but at least do one. See how that goes. Folks, that's pretty much it for the third tab. My gosh, was that hard? Nah. Would you like to try to do your own financial statements and get everything to balance? No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. It looks deceptively simple. It's very difficult to get it to work right. But we got good financial statements for you. Pleased to do it. Thank you for watching. Tune in for tab number four, which is where the fun gets to be. That's where we're going to actually cut a deal once we have some financial statements then we can figure out how to slice and dice the equity so that we create a fair, doable, fundable deal. 
Thank you. Bye.